Welcome back to Thriller Recaps. Today, I am going to show you a horror thriller film from 2019, titled, The Hole in the Ground. So relax, and watch out for spoilers. The film begins with a young mother named Sarah, and her 8-year-old son Chris, who have just moved to a house in the countryside to start a new life. On their way to the new home, Sarah almost hits someone in the middle of the road with her car. After making sure Chris is okay, Sarah steps out to check on the stranger. This stranger turns out to be Noreen, the old woman that keeps on whispering he's not my son. Noreen didn't answer Sarah's question, but when she turned around to stare at Chris, she comes off as very creepy. Sensing something was wrong, Sarah quickly grabbed the mirror and decided to leave. Despite all the efforts, she struggles to fill the void left by Chris's father, causing Chris to often wonder where his father is. Raising Chris alone is not easy for Sarah, and sometimes they end up arguing over small things like Chris's selective eating habits, but for the most part their relationship was strong. Sarah is always hugging Chris and keeps telling him she loves him, and they have their own little game where they make funny faces to make each other laugh. One day during lunch, Chris cried because he saw a spider in the kitchen. Sarah catches it and releases it out, but Chris doesn't like this because it means it may come back. He angrily said that his dad would have killed the spider and asked Sarah why he didn't leave with them. It's hard to explain, so Sarah just stays quiet, which makes Chris even angrier. He steps on the spider, calls his mother a liar, and runs off into the woods. Sarah ran after him, the wind started to blow harder the further she goes. Sarah stops in her tracks when she stumbles upon a strange sight. It is a massive sinkhole in the ground. Before she can decide what to do, Chris appears behind her and apologizes for bringing up his father while knowing it would break her heart, so Sarah hugs him and takes him away, not wanting him to see the sinkhole. Later that night, Sarah heard the door creaking, so she closed it before going to bed. Chris starts attending a new school but has trouble making friends. When he receives an announcement about an upcoming talent show at his school, Sarah tells him that he should sign up because it will help him make friends with his classmates, but Chris stays hesitant. Later, Sarah attends dinner with some new friends and neighbors, including her manager Lily Jones. During the meet, everyone shares crazy stories. Where she gets to learn about Noreen, everyone in town thought she was crazy. Lily reveals that Noreen's son James used to be her classmate. When James was 8 years old, Noreen burst into the classroom, freaked out, and started screaming insane things about her own son. The child was transferred to another school and Noreen received psychiatric treatment in a hospital. However, when she got discharged from hospital months later, she ran over her son with her car. No one is sure if this was an accident or done intentionally. When she got home, Sarah couldn't sleep, being heavily aware of the wind blowing and all the creaking noises in the house. Suddenly, a door banged, she ran out of the room to check on Chris but didn't see him on his bed or anywhere else in the house. Sarah ran downstairs to find the back door open, and her anxiety led her to grab a flashlight and look for her son in the middle of the night. At that time, the forest was dark and spooky, so Sarah couldn't stay there for a long. As soon as she hears some strange noises coming from the forest, she ran back home and calls the police authorities for help. As soon as the call ends, she suddenly turned around to see Chris standing at the bedroom door saying he had been there all this time. The next day, Sarah visits a doctor, who asks her if she has a history of depression or anxiety and examines the scar on her forehead from the accident which happened a couple of years ago. After the examination, the doctor prescribed her some sedatives to take before going to bed. One day when she called Chris for lunch, he was nowhere to be found. However, just as she looked at the table, he mysteriously appeared on the table. This convinced her that she had an anxiety problem, thus she begins taking pills before going to bed. When she woke up the next morning, she saw Chris carrying a bouquet of flowers he brought from outside. Scolding him for leaving the house when he is not supposed to, Sarah accepts the gift and hugs him. The next time Sarah picks Chris at school, she notices Chris has now formed a close bond with an entire group, despite his previous struggles in making friends. Also he is now friend with the kid who used to bully him. On the way to their home, they saw Noreen standing in the middle of the road, and she and Chris couldn't stop staring at each other. Since honking didn't work, Sarah got out of the car and asks Noreen to leave, only to find her whispering again. This time she says it's not your boy. They are suddenly interrupted by Noreen's husband Des. He apologized to Sarah for his wife's behavior and for not keeping a better eye on his wife. Noreen took advantage of this distraction to walk up to the car and started banging on the passenger's window, saying it's not your boy. She even hits his head on the window to break it, so Sarah immediately runs away and Des grabs his wife to stop from following them. The next morning, while driving Chris to school, Sarah still feels unsettled and disturbed by Noreen's strange claims about Chris. Thus she decides to go to Noreen's house, only to find her dead on the floor with her head buried in the ground. Later, when the police come to her house for the inquiry, Sarah sees a police officer distracting Chris by playing arm wrestling with him. 
For a moment, she thought she saw Chris using unnatural strength to win and even breaking the officer's wrist, but it turns out to be just a hallucination. Later Sarah took a shower and noticed that her scar was bleeding for some reasons. When Sarah returned to work the next day, the first topic her manager Lily brought up was Noreen's death. Sarah quickly changes the topic to the motherhood, confessing she sometimes looks at Chris and does not recognize him. As a mother of two, Lily assured her that this is normal, just another thing to get used to when your kids are growing so fast. Later, Sarah attended Noreen's funeral at her home, where she finds dozens of mirrors hung in every corner of the house, except today they were covered in black cloth. The saddened Des comes by to share a drink with her. Sarah took the time to ask him why Noreen said Chris was not her son. Des explains that this is just what Noreen did. Just after their son's eighth birthday, she began to notice various changes in the boy's behavior and got convinced that he was an imposter. He also revealed that it was not Noreen who killed the child. It was Des who had not seen him on the driveway. As the days pass, Sarah does her best to go back to her usual routine. While she is walking through the forest, she finds Chris's toy soldier near the sinkhole she saw earlier. Curious, Sarah approaches the huge sinkhole and sees that it is constantly consuming the surrounding soil while an unknown sound was heard from inside. Later during lunch, Sarah is shocked to see her son willingly eating foods he always refused to eat and decides to confront him about the toy. He refused going out near the sinkhole, causing Sarah to raise her voice in frustration. And then all of a sudden, Chris becomes enraged and forcefully pushes the table, displaying an unnatural strength. This incident challenges Sarah's belief that he is her son. When he realized what he had done, he apologized and went back to his room. At night, Sarah hears strange noises coming from Chris's bedroom. She approached and observed him through the keyhole and the gap under the door. Here things get scarier when she witnesses Chris crawling around the room on all fours. He also caught a spider and proceeds to eat it. This is too much for Sarah to handle, so she ran into the bedroom, and when Chris came to see her, she just said goodnight as usual. The next day, Sarah took Chris to the doctor, who found nothing wrong during the examination. Privately, Sarah explains the changes in Chris's behavior, but the doctor is concerned about Sarah's mental health and wants to know if the scars were caused by Chris's father instead of an accident. Sarah then decided to buy a video camera and hides it inside a wall in Chris's bedroom, hoping to know the truth about her son's changed behavior. She also decides not to take her pills anymore. In the morning, Chris continues to eat big amounts of food which is more than the usual. Sarah apologized to him for her awkward behavior. Chris responds by touching her scar, violently inserting his fingers into the wound. Thankfully, it was all just a nightmare. Later that day, Sarah goes to Chris's school to watch the talent show. His class is performing as a choir and the song they chose was about hole in a bog. Suddenly the room went dark and everyone in the auditorium vanishes. Sarah is left alone with Chris who is on the stage, his voice deepens, and his eyes reveal a chilling truth. Sarah ran out of the auditorium in fear, but couldn't find and door to leave the hall. Lily sees her and asks what is wrong, to which Sarah responds by saying Chris is not her son. Speaking of Chris, he showed up there with his teacher, so Sarah ran away again. This time she managed to get out of the hall and return home, and retrieves the video camera which she has hidden to check the footage. What she finds in the footage is rather terrifying, so she decides to have a second opinion, and goes to see Des. The man welcomes her back to his home, and explains the reason that Noreen hung up all the mirrors. It's because only mirrors can reveal the truth and that she always wanted to be sure her husband was alright, or if he was turning into someone like James. Sarah shows Des video of his son's problem now happening to Chris. Des becomes furious as he doesn't want to admit his son had a problem and angrily throws the camera to the ground, breaking it. Des denies seeing anything, but he will not call Sarah crazy either. Sarah went home and is retrieving the memory card from the broken camera, and finds Chris is already here waiting for her, questioning why she left him at school. She quickly apologized and gave an excuse about her health. He then told Sarah in a demonic voice that he doesn't like being left alone. After sharing an uncomfortable hug with Chris, Sarah began to prepare dinner. It is now revealed that Sarah has been putting the sleeping pills in Chris's food, and now once again, he eats another dish he used to hate. After dinner, Sarah asks Chris to play their favorite game, but obviously Chris does not remember the game. Sarah confronts him by telling him he is not her son. It is at this point that the entity realizes its game is up, so the shapeshifter bearing Chris's face screams and attack her, throwing her into the kitchen several times until she passes out. Sarah woke up a few minutes later and find the creature dragging her through the ground to bury her head, like it did to Noreen. Luckily, the sleeping pills affected at that point and the creature passes out, as she is not covered with too much dirt, she manages to escape on her own. Taking advantage of Chris's unconscious state, she carries his body to the basement and uses the car's side view mirror to validate her suspicions. To her horror, the reflection revealed the demonic creature's face. As the creature regains consciousness, the monster stood up and attacked Sarah again 
but even with extra strength, she easily pushes off the kid's body. As the monster began to let out a demonic screech, Sarah stepped forward and closed the door. Now that the monster is off her back, Sarah can focus on getting the real Chris back. She takes the torch and runs into the forest, where she approaches the sinkhole and lets the hole swallow her until she falls into a tunnel in the ground. The place was very narrow, but Sarah kept moving until she enters a larger cave. There she found a number of human skeletons, and manages to find an unconscious Chris who she quickly picks up to take with her. At that time, Sarah saw that they were not alone. A bunch of faceless monsters are waking up and getting ready to go after them. It's harder to go through the tunnel along with the kid, but at least it means only one monster can enter the cave at a time. The shapeshifter managed to grab Sarah's wrist, allowing him to copy her face, but Sarah hit him with a flashlight until he let her go. After leaving the cave, Sarah examines Chris and confirms he is still alive when he wakes up. They ran to the house and Sarah approached the car, but the doors were locked. After leaving Chris next to the car, Sarah goes inside the house to get the keys and hears the imposter Chris calling her from the basement. There is only one thing she can do now to escape safely, she sets the house on fire before leaving with his son in the car. Months pass, and Sarah and Chris return to their normal lives. However, the disturbing experience still stays in Sarah's mind. She hung mirrors around the house just like Noreen, and regularly took photos of Chris to reassure herself that she is truly living with her real son and not an imposter. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to watch more videos like this.